Like the outside of the private school he attended, Zachary Jameson had an impressive facade. Always smiling in every picture he took, even though for most of junior high, what Zach really felt was tortured. Tortured by just about all the kids in his class at the American Heritage Academy outside Atlanta. Jacob Cordero was one of them. Very sad, because I had been part of the, you know, making fun of him and leaving him out. Jacob says the kids began picking on Zach after he got juvenile arthritis. He says they started by mocking his limp, and it snowballed from there. People would, like, take his lunch, take sweatshirts, you know. Do you have any idea how bad he felt? No. Because he was just kind of quiet. He never really seemed too sad about it. Zach's parents say, at first, they were also dismissive of the jokes and slurs. I would say, well, you know, maybe they're just trying to be funny. You know, I don't maybe think that's a either nickname. one of us fully mm -hmm. appreciated the hurricane that was going on inside of him. Last year in school, many kids called me chicken legs and other funny names because of the way I walked. Even after Zach gave this speech at an arthritis fundraiser, the Jamisons say they still would have never guessed their 11-year-old son was in so much physical and emotional pain that he would actually consider killing himself. But he did consider it, and eventually even told them so. And I, I, I felt the blood drain out of my face. Bullying that ends in suicide has become an all-too-familiar theme on the news. And although there are certainly lessons to be learned in those terrible endings, the more important lessons may lie in stories like this one, where the ending is far from tragic. <laughs> Today, Zach Jamison is 13, alive and happy, thanks to a lot of good people who made some very smart decisions. First, his parents sought counseling for Zach, but they also encouraged him to get involved with a youth group at church to meet kids outside of school, oh. like Paul and Caleb. Okay. And at that time, that's all I needed, was to be accepted. Yes. <laughs> I'm really glad I met him. <laughs> I suppose you are. Of course, he was still blackballed at school. That's mine. But Zach says these new friendships gave him the courage to face that challenge anew. Yep. So when someone suggested he become manager of the cross-country team, he went for it. It helped. It really did, because I connected with a lot of friends. That's when he really felt wanted. And whose idea was that? Mine. Thanks to school administrators who forced the issue, Jacob and Zach had a long heart-to-heart -heart in the principal's office. About how he fell and how it had crushed him, and he really wasn't able to do anything. And you were different from that day on? Yes. He is extremely different this year. Really? Okay. Okay. At every school, there will always be the popular kids. No. <laughs> and there will always be the outsiders. But as Zach and Jacob prove, there will also always be common ground for those brave enough to walk it. Steve Hartman, CBS News, Atlanta.